Yeah, I think it, that's a very big simplification of what's a very complex problem. I'll give you an idea of some of those complexities. Uh, the first one is indoor surfaces are all different. So in some cases, we're seeing outbreaks associated with environments like meatpacking plants. And I have to wonder in those cases, is the surface important because it's very environmentally favorable because it's cold or has other factors that make the COVID-19 likely to still be infective uh, on the surface. Another example of why I think surfaces matter is that we now understand just how important resuspension is. When I say resuspension, I mean a droplet or a particle that lands on a surface and then can become airborne again because of air movement or because of disturbance to that surface. So uh, what we've recently learned is that uh, the flu virus, uh, influenza A specifically, can, can uh, preserve its infectivity through deposition and resuspension uh, from a surface. And so I have to wonder if the same sort of thing is going on with SARS-CoV-2. Right. And then the last comment I'll make, and this is probably the biggest one, is that a lot of the research on surface survivability of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is based on these very idealized surfaces. And we know that indoor surfaces are not idealized. We know that they're covered with layers of organic, uh, semi-volatile and volatile material, inorganic material like dust, water, microorganisms, and they're very kind of complex in their nature. And so I really have to wonder if survivability and transmission from surfaces is really very different on real surfaces than those that have been used in testing.